Jay Quellen. No Jay Quellen here? Balake. Where is Balake at? A.A. Ron. A.A. Ron is right here, everyone. Thank you for joining me and welcome back to the channel. Guys, I found something today that totally blew my mind and I gotta share it with you. It involves another Danny Masterson victim who had come forward. It involves Gerard Butler, Omar Epps, a movie called Dracula 2000, and an actress named Jennifer Esposito. Court is out of session today, so there will be no new developments in the Danny Masterson case itself. But earlier this week, when Jane Doe 3 was testifying, she mentioned an incident in October 2001 when she and Danny had gone to meet up with a bunch of friends at a hotel bar in Hollywood. And Jane Doe 3 specifically mentioned the actress Jennifer Esposito. As soon as Jennifer's name was mentioned, the defense team objected. The judge overruled it, but, uh, but pushed the prosecution and the witness to skip talking about who was there and everything and get on to what actually happened later in the evening. Now, it's not clear what it was exactly that the defense was objecting to. Remember, there are no cameras in this courtroom. Tony Ortega is publishing live notes that he's taking. He's taking notes, not, uh, he's taking notes live in the trial and publishing them on the Underground Bunker blog every time uh, court takes a break. So short of requesting the actual transcript being uh, kept by the court reporter or, or whoever keeps the court transcripts, short of that, Tony's notes are the most reliable thing to go on uh, to follow the court proceedings. Tony's notes include Jane Doe 3 talking about this party, the hotel, Jennifer Esposito. It notes the objection doesn't state what the objection was exactly. Now, the event that the prosecution was leading Jane Doe 3 to discuss was the fact that after this event, outside the hotel, uh, Danny Masterson was verbally attacking a woman who was out there to the extent that the woman's new husband actually uh, beat the tar out of Danny Masterson right there on Sunset Boulevard. And the way the notes have been taken have caused some to speculate whether this was in fact Jennifer Esposito's husband who beat the tar out of Danny Masterson. And the best of my reading of these notes is that it was not, first of all, Jennifer Esposito wasn't married to anybody at that time. And with that information, when you read the notes, it's clear that Jane Doe 3 could very easily be talking about someone else. However, knowing that it wasn't Jennifer Esposito's husband who beat up Danny, it still made me wonder why in the world was the defense team objecting when Jennifer, right when Jennifer Esposito's name was mentioned. And in the process of trying to dig deeper into this, I find that at another event where Jennifer Esposito would have been present, yet another different woman is saying she was drugged and attacked by Danny Masterson. The Jennifer Esposito Dracula 2000 connection here just strikes me as Peculiar. Does that have anything to do with why the defense was objecting to Jennifer Esposito's name even being brought up? I don't know, but here's the article that I found. This woman, Kathleen Jenkins, popped up on Twitter almost exactly one year ago from today. And Tony Ortega called her and spoke to her and wrote a bit about what she had to say. New allegation, woman says she was attacked by Danny Masterson at Dracula 2000 cast party. I'm gonna be censoring some of the words here so that uh, our Lord and Savior YouTube does not demonetize and suppress this video. Tony reports, late Friday night, a woman named Kathleen Jenkins made a startling claim on Twitter. Jenkins said that she too had been attacked by Danny Masterson and had been too afraid to talk about it. We spoke with Jenkins yesterday. She said she had been completely unaware that there had been other women making allegations against Masterson until this week. This week, Kathleen Jenkins entered Danny Masterson's name into Google for the first time in a very long time and was stunned to see all of the news stories about allegations of him drugging and attacking women. She had no idea that there were women out there telling stories remarkably similar to what she herself had experienced and never spoken to anybody about. In the year 2000, Kathleen Jenkins was living in Toronto and was in her early 30s, and she landed a job working on the crew of a Jennifer Lopez movie called Angel Eyes. When production on Angel Eyes wrapped, the cast and the crew had a party at a hotel in Vancouver. There was another movie that was also holding a wrap party at the same hotel at the same time 
That was for the movie Dracula 2000, which Danny Masterson was in, which Jennifer Esposito was in, as was Gerard Butler and Omar Epps, among others. Kathleen was attending this event with her husband and her two teenage stepdaughters. Tony reports that Jenkins said she spotted Gerard Butler, who invited her and others up to his suite, where he and other members of the cast of Dracula 2000 were also having a party of some kind. Jenkins went to Butler's suite along with her husband at the time and his two daughters who were teenagers. Also at the party were Dracula 2000 cast members, Omar Epps and Danny Masterson. While her husband was out on the balcony, Jenkins remembers that it was Masterson who was chatting her up and offered her a drink. The next thing she remembered, she was waking up in a hotel room in terrible pain. She said she had severe pain below the waist in both areas, if you know what I mean. She continues, I remember the next morning walking out of their hotel room and my 16 year old stepdaughter was walking out of another hotel room at the same time. I assumed the same thing had happened to her and she didn't want to talk about it, but we were both in a lot of pain. We both came out at the same time that is so vivid, it was the strangest thing. I'd never been drugged before. I do not know how this has not been very public, very big news. Perhaps there aren't enough uh, you know, uh, verifiable sources for media outlets to do a story on because what I'm reading here is not only more incredibly incriminating, uh, incriminating information about Danny Masterson, but that someone else who was involved in this party in Gerard Butler's suite was involved in doing something similar to what Danny Masterson did, except to someone else who was not an adult. And considering this happened at a cast and crew party of the Dracula 2000 movie, and Gerard Butler is implicated in this story, and Omar Epps is implicated in this story, and Jennifer Esposito would have been at this party. And it's clear Jennifer Esposito continued to be a friend of Danny Masterson and Jane Doe 3 well after production of this movie, because fast forward about one year, and Jane Doe 3 is talking about she and Danny meeting up with Jennifer Esposito at a, at a, at a hotel bar in Hollywood just to hang out. And let me be clear, when I say implicated, when I say Gerard Butler and Omar Epps are implicated, no, no accusations have been made against either of those two. And as I read this story, I've read it through a few times to you know, try to get it straight how it reads. It does not read like the attacks occurred in the same hotel suite where the party occurred. It does read as if they woke up in hotel rooms that were different than the suite where the party was occurring. But the fact that multiple individuals were involved in these attacks makes me wonder just how many of the people surrounding Danny, I guess for the purposes of this story, it's how many other members of the cast or crew of Dracula 2000 were involved in this drugging and attacking of these women at the rap party for the movie. And does the fact that Jennifer Esposito seems may have some firsthand knowledge about some of the stuff Danny's been up to or accused of or anything, is her name being mentioned? Is this why the defense objected to her name being mentioned? That's why I mentioned earlier that the notes aren't quite clear what the objection was for. Because it's only reading through the notes that it looks like the defense objected the moment Jennifer Esposito's name was mentioned, but it's possible that's just how the notes read and that that's not actually you know, what occurred in the courtroom. And again, if I'm getting repetitive here, I apologize, but the reason I'm kind of stunned is because it was in the process of trying to understand what Jennifer Esposito's connection was to this case that I stumble upon an article that was written about another attack that occurred by Danny Masterson. And for this woman's account of what happened to her to be nearly identical to the incidents for which Masterson is currently facing charges, and for this attack to have even included people who weren't even 
adults. My mind is just blown right now. And the particularly heart-wrenching aspect of this story, aside from the attack itself, obviously, is that the woman and her stepdaughter were so ashamed uh, and embarrassed about what had happened um, that they didn't uh, share the information uh, with anybody. Uh, forget the police. She didn't even share the information with her husband. Uh, she was so ashamed about it. And she's no longer married to that person. And in this article here, she says she's been completely unable to form uh, new relationships. And also, here's what she said. Here's how all this came back to her, actually. She says sometime later, uh, she actually watched Dracula 2000. She says, I saw Danny's face on the screen and I instantly had a panic attack. I just lost it. Over the next little while, some things were coming back. What I assume happened was that he had put a drug in my drink. It's probably why I blacked out. I know he and perhaps others attacked me. When her husband asked her why she had broken down in the movie, she couldn't bring herself to tell him about it but she did tell him years later. Then this week, she happened across the 2017 tweet by Bobet uh, Rialis. I never know if this is Rialis or Riles. And she was stunned. I had never really done any research on Dana before. Then she did a search and was shocked by what came up. So Kathleen Jenkins is not on the witness list. No one, in fact, there has been mention of some one or more uh, victims, alleged victims of Danny, uh, for whom he's not facing charges in this case, but who may possibly testify about what happened to them. I've heard no mention about whether Kathleen happens to be that individual, and, and I don't know. Bobet um, Rialis is someone mentioned in this article uh, that Tony wrote last year. Bobet is who I have always assumed would be testifying. That is because in the last episode of the Scientology and the Aftermath show, Bobette is one of the women who spoke out publicly against Danny. However, for some reason, the prosecutor decided not to move, not to charge Danny um, with anything that happened to Bobette. I'm sure it has just something to do with how much evidence they were able to obtain. Bobette is one of Danny's victims who's not a Scientologist. And therefore, the same evidence doesn't exist for her as exists for the Scientologist victims because Scientology requires people to write these written reports on each other for pretty much everything. So the science, for the Scientologist victims, there's a lot of written documentation regarding what occurred and who was involved and all this kind of stuff. No such evidence existed for Bobette, and it would be, and no such evidence would exist for any non-Scientologist victims of Danny Masterson. So that's uh, what we have here today. I'm gonna link to this article that Tony wrote about this in the description down below. Some truly incredible uh, and disgusting stuff. But I think it's helpful for people to see. And by the way, this occurred in Canada. I think I mentioned that earlier. This was in Vancouver. So a woman who had nothing to do with Scientology, had nothing to do with Leah Remini, nothing to do with Scientology in the aftermath, wasn't even the, in the United States, had no knowledge of any other Danny Masterson victims or anything, has an almost identical story. And to even think that some of Danny's cast members or crew members on the Dracula 2000 movie may have been involved in the kind of disgusting stuff that Danny was doing at that time, truly mind blowing. And that's what I mean when I say I'm surprised this hasn't blown up into a big story because um, evidence or not, I don't know, there's, um, I feel like there's a lot more to know about all of this. All right, everyone, that's all I have for now. Thank you everyone for watching and listening. Thank you to everyone who watches until the very end, and I'll talk to you soon. Okay, if you wanna see my rock and roll songs, click right on this guitar. And if you wanna see a, a different one of my videos, uh, oh, then you could click right inside here. If you have subscribed or not, 